So this video is going to be a bit different. I came across a video on YouTube uh, with Sean Oliver and Kevin Nash. Uh, and pro wrestling fans will know who they are. But if you're not a pro wrestling fan, kind of bear with me in this video and just concentrate on the fitness advice that Shane Douglas gives and uh, whether you agree with it or not. Uh, but if you are a pro wrestling fan, um, Sean Oliver is kind of like a, a pro wrestling reporter. You know, he does shoot interviews with all these different wrestlers. Um, and what he did here was he sent a email when he turned 40 in 2013 to Shane Douglas asking him for fitness advice. Now, Shane Douglas is a pro wrestler who is not um, well known for his physique. Like he's not a Lex Luger or a Rick Rude, um, but you know he has a solid pro wrestler's build, you know, decent muscle mass. Um, and to tell you a little bit about him, Shane Douglas, his real name is Troy Martin. He was born in 1964. He's from New Brighton, Pennsylvania. Very successful in the pro wrestling business. He's held at least a dozen championship titles. You know. Uh, from ECW, WCW, NWA, WWF, XPW, and then he's still active on the independent circuit. He's a five-time world champion. He's won the ECW world title four times. He's won the NWA world title one time. And then he's also a one-time uh, WWF intercontinental champion. Um, he's definitely He was definitely most successful in ECW, he was known as the franchise of that company, and he debuted there in 1993. Um, you know, some of his famous feuds were with the Pitbulls, with Tommy Dreamer, and then, of course, with Taz. And uh, he was also known for the stable he had there with um, Bam Bam Bigelow, Chris Candido, and, of course, he was managed by Francine. But I'm going to get into this email I'll go through the points that Shane Douglas makes. Uh, keep in mind that he's giving this advice to basically a 40-year-old beginner. And then, uh, you know, I'll tell you what I agree with and um, whether if it's good advice or not. Okay, so as I was saying, the context of this is Sean Oliver, who was 40 years old, you know, he admired uh, the physique Shane Douglas had in ECW, um, and he thought he would write Shane Douglas for some fitness advice. You know, he's picking it up at 40, and Kevin Nash, uh, toward the end of the video, kind of makes fun of him for this, saying that, you know, if you're waiting until 40 to actually start working out, you're kind of lazy, um, which there's some truth in. But, you know, some people pick it up later in life, and they actually stick to it. But from my experience, most people who want to start working out, you know, either at 40 or 50, it's kind of just doing it on a whim. Um, it's kind of like a uh, spur of a moment thing. Like they get motivated for a short amount of time and they end up uh, losing interest and in moving on to something else. But, you know, that's not always the case. Um, you know, there are always exceptions to the rule. So let's get into this actual advice that Shane Douglas gives for Sean Oliver, 40 years old, basically a beginner, hasn't worked out since high school. The first thing he says is starting lean without body fat, a lot of body fat, is an advantage. Um, this is true because you don't have to worry about getting a lot of body fat off. All you have to do is jump right into uh, muscle building. You could eat at a slight surplus, uh, get your protein in, and just focus on building muscle. So I completely agree with that. I think anybody who knows bodybuilding and fitness would agree with that. That's stating the obvious that being coming from a position of leanness rather than being having to worry about fat to deal with is an advantage. The second thing that he mentions in the email is the actual workout layout. He advises for Sean Oliver, 40-year-old male, um, 
to work in a high rep range, 12 to 15 range, um, a low to moderate weight, which would be about 50 to 60% of his max, and then minimal rest breaks to crank up intensity. Again, I completely agree with this. I like high working in high rep ranges. I also agree with uh, keeping your rest breaks down. Uh, it's going to crank up intensity. So I have no issue with that advice. Um, and then somebody, you know, going into their 40s, you know, they should be in it for longevity. I think um, Shane Douglas mentions that, you know, you don't want to be lifting extremely heavy weight uh, Ronnie Coleman style. Um, so you want to be in this for the long haul. The third point of advice he gives is the frequency of the workout. And he recommends uh, hitting each body part twice per week. This is exactly what I do. So again, 100% agreement um, because I've noticed a big difference in my physique ever since I went from hitting body parts twice a week versus just a hitting it really hard once per week then giving it you know a full week's rest. Um, so what I do, I've covered this in another video, is I do uh, chest and back Monday, shoulders, arms Tuesday, legs and abs Wednesday, and then I repeat. The next um, piece of advice he gives, point number four, is the, uh, the workout variation, the workout variety. Um, he says to vary your workouts, like in, have an A and then a B uh, routine, uh, and then vary exercises. Again, this is essentially what I do because I kind of go through um, – the routine I normally do the first part of the week. And then ever since I've been, uh, you know, reviewing these different workouts for the channel, I often integrate, you know, uh, new routines, uh, new uh, rep and set schemes in, new exercises in the second part of the week. So I'm getting variety. I'm shocking and confusing the muscles. You know, I'm still working the same body parts on the uh, given days. It's just they're getting hit a little bit differently because I'm adding variety in. And again, I completely agree with this. Uh, keeping things fresh, trying new exercises, uh, you know, it it keeps you excited about the process. It keeps you motivated. Um, and you also have the issue of muscle confusion. So I agree with this advice. Uh the fifth thing he mentions is cardio. He says to at least do it three days a week. Again, solid advice. Uh, and this is where Kevin Nash brought up a little bit of contention with what Shane Douglas was saying. And it, the, to be fair to Shane Douglas, he never stated, um, you know, on cardio, if you should do high intensity or low intensity. Nash kind of took it um, that... Shane Douglas was saying that, you know, he recommended high intensity cardio and Nash was saying that walking on a treadmill, you know, is just as good for fat burning. You know, he talked about Ronnie Coleman doing that and other bodybuilders and that you wanted to um, spare muscle and you wanted to spare most of your energy for uh, weight training and um, for, you know, a bodybuilding routine to, to build muscle. I totally agree with this. You know, my favorite form of cardio is going for walks on long distances. I like swimming. So, um, you know, I agree with that. But to be fair to Shane, you know, I he never really, never really was clear if he was advocating high intensity or not. But doing low intensity steady state cardio will burn body fat uh, just as well as wearing out your knees with a lot of um, jogging or high intensity stuff. So just keep that in mind. And then the sixth point he brings up is supplements. Um, creatine was recommended. Uh, and I a hundred percent agree. If you go back and watch my video on supplements, I rank creatine as the number one supplement because you could meet your protein goals through food. Uh, whey protein just helps you get there faster 
helps you fill in gaps if you're having a hard time uh, hitting your daily protein goal, but it is a very doable uh, with whole food. But, uh, you know, he also advises with creatine that the loading phase is not necessary. I completely agree. Um, and he uh, suggests drinking, uh, you know, staying hydrated with it, drinking plenty of water to pr protect the kidneys. Again, I agree, I agree solid advice. Uh, he also mentions NO2 supplements, um, which are fine. Um, they probably do help the muscle flush more blood in, aid in recovery, get you that pump. But I don't see them as a necessity. If you have the money to spend on it and you would like to try them, um, you know, more power to you. But, you know, it's not a supplement like creatine where I would put it as like an essential. And then the seventh thing, the final thing that was brought up was testosterone. But Sean Oliver and Kevin Nash in the video failed to actually mention what Shane Douglas said about it. I'm guessing Shane was probably maybe advising a, um, you know, a testosterone replacement uh, routine for general health and longevity for Sean Oliver since he was, you know, um, getting into his 40s, maybe looking into that, but it was never stated. And then Sean Oliver asked Kevin Nash if, Basically, you have to read between the lines. He was asking him if over-the-counter um, like testosterone boosters work. And Kevin Nash said, no, they're a waste of money, which um, I agree with. Um, the herbal test boosters, they do very, uh, it's a very minimal effect uh, that they're going to give you. And it's certainly not enough to affect muscle building. Um you know, they may aid uh, libido a bit, but for actual muscle burning, uh, for actual muscle building, um, you would actually need, uh, you know, injectable testosterone. The over the counter, the stuff you get from online, the herbal uh, test boosters, you know, I, I would 100% agree they are a waste of your money. And you should allocate that money to uh, supplements like creatine, whey protein, and even a good multivitamin. And I would take something like zinc or ZMA before I worried about a uh, herbal test booster. But uh, all in all, I think Shane Douglas gave very solid uh, advice. Um, I pretty much agree with all of it. And it's stuff that, you know, I'm already pretty much doing. So um, let me know what you think about his advice and if it's comparable to what you implement.